Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, folks, Big Paul here today with a muscle rinse. I'm going to talk about the biggest study of all time on how to get huge, how to get ripped, and how to grow muscle in the most efficient way possible. And it's probably not what you think. I'm a muscle nerd. I love looking at studies. And we're going to talk about the most important one that we all can follow in just one second. All right, first, I want to make a disclaimer here. I love science. I'm a science nerd. I sit around and read studies on a daily basis. I am on PubMed all the time. I'm searching chat GPT to extrapolate data from studies. I was a science major in college on my second time around. Initially, I studied music, but I love science. I love getting into the weeds on stuff, but I think some of it can go too far sometimes. We're, it's a weird time to be alive. I remember the early 2000s was the time of the bro scientist, and there was just a lot of bad information on the message boards. Some of it was good. There was some really bright people on there that brought some good ideas, guys like Dante Trudell. I remember Chad Nichols and his board. Uh, I think it was Muscle Mayhem back in the day. But there was a lot of good information out there. Now we live in the time of the evidence-based pseudoscientists. These people <laughs> can take any study and use it as a way to confirm their biases and say that someone else is wrong. They look at these studies. They say that well, everybody else is wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm the only one smart enough to look at the study. Let me tell you, man. I was a science major in school. And reading studies is not easy. First of all, it, you're probably not even qualified to look at one unless you've taken a college level statistics class to even understand what's being portrayed in any of the, any of the graphs, any of the mathematics, any of the results that are in there. It, it, looking at the abstract and looking at the conclusion does not make you a scientist. That doesn't mean you know what the hell you're talking about. Okay. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't look at them. I think it's important to read. It's important to learn. That's how you get better at things is through practice and through through repetition. The more you read, the better your reading comprehension is. I will also say that unless you have taken college level English classes, you probably do not are not going to have the reading comprehension to even understand what's in those studies. Look, I consider myself to be a reasonably intelligent guy. I have two degrees. And I'm often confused and don't understand what's going on in these studies myself. I have to reach out to guys like Kurt and ask them if I'm interpreting this data correctly. I took high-level mathematics classes in college. I was a computer science major. So, I mean, I've taken statistics, trigonometry, calculus, all of these high-level mathematics classes that are required to have a computer science degree. And even for me, some of it's hard to understand some yeho that claims to be a pseudoscientist that read the abstract in the conclusion doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. And you aren't evidence-based because you cherry-picked one study done on rabbits 30 years ago or 40 years ago and are drawing conclusions based on that for bodybuilders in 2024. Now, I will tell you what is the biggest and most comprehensive study of all time when it comes to how to grow muscle how to get ripped, how to get huge. All you have to do is look at the thousands of guys that have been top level competitors, the thousands of guys that have already won their pro card, the thousands of guys that have done it. Now, that's not to say these dudes don't have exceptional genetics, but there are guys that made it to the pros that have very mediocre genetics. I wouldn't consider myself to be genetically gifted, and I'm competing at a national level at almost 50 years old, I would say I have slightly above average genetics and nothing nothing exceptional. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I don't know everything. I'm learning every day and there's things that I said a year or two ago that I cringe when I hear it now. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly evolving. 
So making declarations based off of some study done 50 years ago that has no relevance to our cohort is absolutely insane to me. And calling yourself an evidence-based educator because you read some study and you use that as your way of confirming bias that everybody else is wrong. Now, if we want to take a look at it, the formula is not that complicated. And I'm not saying there isn't some nuance to it and there isn't things that we can do better. There certainly is. And I'm always looking for those things. And I like to read stuff written by very smart people that have PhDs that can simplify the stuff and make it easier for a lay person like me to understand. And I'll take that information and I will put it into practice in the gym and see if it actually works. But I will tell you this. There are a lot of dummy bodybuilders, guys, that aren't that smart that have made themselves huge by just sticking to the basics and keeping things simple. That's not to say that there isn't sometimes that things can be more complicated, but the formula is really not rocket science at the end of the day. It's eat meat and rice five to six times a day. Don't let yourself get fat. Take basic PEDs that work. As you get bigger, you need to take more of those PEDs. Lift progressively in the gym. Most bodybuilders lift the same way. If you look at it, if you take a step back and think about it critically, let's put our our pseudoscientist hat on. I've got mine on today, my pseudoscience hat on today. If we take our pseudoscientist hat on, apply Occam's razor to this and think about it critically, all of these guys, all the top guys pretty much do the same thing. They train similarly. They use a PPL style training or, or bro split. Well, all of them are doing some sort of moderate to high volume style of training that are professional bodybuilders. They all use the same anabolics for the most part, a testosterone base with growth hormone and then whatever secondary anabolics cooperate with them and they run them at doses that are appropriate and relevant to their skill level and size. And they do this for years and years and years on end, and they progressively increase the food. They progressively increase the weights. They progressively increase the <laughs> the PEDs. It's it's really not rocket science. I think the part that people get themselves twisted up in the knots over is they're trying to look for a shortcut or a way to remove years from it. The way to remove years from the getting from point A to point B is to do it in the most efficient way possible, which is already laid out there for you. You don't have to go and reinvent the fucking wheel. You really don't. Now, there are things that have evolved in training and in PEDs and stuff that I, you know, there's some dogmas that were established in bodybuilding that I have come to a different conclusion on over the last few years that I feel like I was wrong about initially. And then I have taken a step back and reevaluated. For example, one I would say is training to absolute failure on everything. I don't think it's necessary once you get to a certain point. There is a time in your training where maybe you need to push things a little bit more, but you get to a point where that's not necessary. Eating higher fats, that's something I thought that you needed to do at one point. I don't think it's completely necessary. Now, there are things that evolve. We're in sort of a renaissance right now when it comes to research and information on training that actually applies to us. But when it comes to PEDs, there's really nothing new out there. All the stuff that's there has been there for 30, 40 years. There aren't a whole lot of new studies on PEDs. Nutrition is essentially the same as it's always been. There's all these trends. There's all these fad diets, but what works hasn't really changed. I mean, if you look at the way the guys ate in the seventies, is it that much different than what they eat now? Meat, and rice, meat, and potatoes five to six times a day. Eggs and, you know, eggs, meat, fish, you know, beef. Does it really changed that much? No, no, it hasn't. <laughs> now, we've gotten better at refining the craft. We, we've polished the corners of it, but it's not rocket science at the end of the day. Now, look, guys, I'm not trying to take away your fun. I love getting into the weeds on stuff, and there is some nuanced stuff that you can do to improve things. Now, once you have the 95% buttoned up, I will repeat this, and I've said this a million times to guys, get the 95% buttoned up, then you can worry about all the nuance and the little details, the 5% that's there at the top of the pyramid, the little little things that we're finding. Now, when you're vying for your pro card, when you're vying for the Olympia stage, those little details can make a big difference. But when you're just a gym bro, just getting started, worrying about the osmolarity of your intra-workout shake, 
is pointless. Worrying about injection timing and whether or not subcutaneous or intramuscular injections are more optimal and whether you should be spacing things out two to three hours versus four hours with your injection timing, blah, 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 microdosing this and microdosing that. It's not going to make fuck all the difference. Being 100% exact with your measurements on your your macros, it guys get their heads explode when I tell them I don't count trace macros. I mean, you know, the one gram of fucking weird ass protein that you're getting from your rice doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's just if you can get the 95% buttoned up, you're going to be close enough to make progress and then focus on that last little bit when you're there at the end. I promise you, most people are overthinking this shit. And don't listen to these gurus that claim they know everything and throw around big words and cite studies that have no background in science, have never studied any of this stuff, probably have never participated in a study. I only listen to the guys that have actually done this shit, and I ask them for advice, and I ask them to help me interpret the stuff, and then I relay the message to you in probably the simplest terms that I can, to the best of my knowledge and how I understand it, and that doesn't mean I'm always right. All right, folks, let me know what you think about studies in bodybuilding, what is more important, getting into the nitty gritty little details or just focusing in the basics, put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how wrong I am. I love each and every one of you. Take care. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.